Hello fellow YouTubers, in this video I'm going to be doing an overview, review, at some samples of this car video recorder from Transcend and the model is Drive Pro 200. Now in this video I'm going to talk about the product, do an unboxing, show you what's inside, what it does, what it doesn't, and also going to show you the footage of the daytime, nighttime, and also a mixed one. So you guys would know basically how it feels like and things like that. Um, in terms of the features, it has a full HD 1080p recording at 30 frames per second with H.264 um, encoding basically. It has 2.4 inch um, LCD on the back so you can view files um, or re recording being made that way. It has a 160 degrees um, f 2.0 lens. Uh, with seven glass elements. Now, basically for those of you who are not into photography, what that means is it has a good low light capability and a sharp image. We're going to see about that. As enhanced night view, not sure compared to what, but that's what they state. And as a G sensor. The G sensor is basically same as uh, this button here. If you have an accident and record certain amount of time before and certain amount uh, of time after, and makes this file basically um, read only, so you cannot overwrite it. So worst case scenario, you crash into a ditch and you lose conscience or whatever, you know, um, and this recorder keeps recording. Usually it will record over your files and basically you lose that recording and you don't know what actually happened. But in this case, it actually protects itself and you're fine with the button. If you had something minor, you obviously can press the button as well if the sensor didn't record, so if there was no impact, you actually can use the manual override. Anyway, about that later. In terms of other features, it has obviously Wi-Fi, which is good uh, for some of you. I'm not sure if I'd be using it often because you have a screen on the back of it and it's more of a gimmick than anything else, but you can also obviously transfer the files via Wi-Fi, which is a nice feature. It operates from zero to 65 degrees centigrade. So basically for those of you guys who want to drive it in the freezing cold or scorching heat, um, this is the temperature range, which also means you shouldn't leave it really in the car on the windscreen in the freezing winter or during the midsummer somewhere on the sunny day um, because it's simply too hot. But that's normal for most of electronics, you know, and it's common sense. It operates, oh, by the way, for temperature wise, it's uh, 32 to 148 Fahrenheit for those of you guys who are not operating in Celsius. Um, in terms of the voltages, it operates at 12 and 24. And what that means is it operates in pretty much any vehicle. Um, so not only cars, but also trucks, uh, heavier vehicles that use 24 volts. And also the actual format it needs to take is five volt, one amp. What that means is you can use something like this, which I have reviewed recently. And what it is, is basically it's a power bank. So you can connect USB and then connect this device and run it that way. Um, what else do we have here? We have um, USB 2.0, by the way. So obviously not USB 3.0, but USB 2.0 should be plenty. It has two year warranty, as mentioned here and somewhere here has 13 languages um, in terms of, um, I suppose, menus and translations on the manuals, which is nice. And last but not least, obviously it does have microphone and loudspeaker. I presume microphones around here. We're gonna see about all that. So that's the features. In terms of the box itself, you already seen that. So I'm not gonna keep you waiting. So the box is now open, nice touch. Um, Nice feeling kind of um, material used, um, some sort of a bit rough texture, so not bad, not the cheapest out there. Very simple packaging inside, Transcend logo, also nice um, touch to include something like that. Now let's see how that opens up. Okay, so there we go, in the box, straight away you have a camera, cables, things like that. Very important and very nice to have. It already includes micro SD card. By the way, you probably heard about this Transcend manufacturer. They used to and they still manufacture um, um, SD cards and things like that. So they included that. It's an MLC um, flash chip. So pretty standard. In here you have what you would call a power adapter. So basically um, USB mini, not micro, USB mini, which is very nice. They're more robust 
to a cigarette lighter or basically car input 12 volt input 12 slash 24 by the way so works on trucks as well it has little lead here for your basically um, video output for a tv in case you want it or some sort of bigger monitor in the car maybe whatever you're up to this is a 3m mount for the car windscreen and that obviously plugs into the camera and uh, we're going to go through that when i'm actually going to show you footage of mounting the camera into the vehicle on the windscreen so what do we have we have lots of different things in terms of languages there is a good example so look how many languages we have very nice um here we have quick start guide with all the explanations that um, i'm going to explain to you most things anyway and we have warranty cards in all the different languages once again they obviously like to advertise themselves so what they do multimedia products and things like that and uh, to me they're more well known by flashcards probably seen a card looking like so before and that's what they do and also memory cards and readers once again and last but not least um, additional sticky pad which is nice to have simply because if you don't position it right the first time you still can obviously correct yourself and remove it with a dental floss as you do let's go with the camera and I'll show you what um, features it has. Okay, and I'm back. So basically, um, the camera itself looks like so. Now you obviously have a little bit of protection here over the lens. It's very nice to include. And lens look like so. So obviously it's a small sensor, however it's a 1080p um, nonetheless. And as I mentioned, 30 FPS, f2.0. You have a video output here. You have a DC in, so basically that's your USB port, five volts, one amp. Here you have the buttons, basically you have on off and other function buttons and LED, which is gonna display later. Um, also obviously you have a screen protector and the matte screen, very um, important. Um, you do have a matte screen, not a shiny screen. Um, here we have micro SD card slot. And here obviously we have a button for recording so you know if you have it set on the windscreen something like that and something happens you want a snapshot of that click that the file is right protected um, certain amount of time is recorded and left there and you know you're all set uh, for later reviewing now i'm just going to remove all the plastic coverings so what do we have here we have a small little reset button um since I haven't used the camera myself just yet, I will by the end of this video, but I haven't used it yet. So I haven't uh, been needing the reset button. We'll see what it does. Here we have the mount for the actual windscreen mount. So obviously it mounts on the top of the camera and then to the windscreen with the 3M um, tape. You obviously have the loudspeaker here on the bottom and you have the microphone part here. So that's pretty, mu pretty much in it for the camera next i'm going to show you some uh, sample footage and then we're going to talk about the actual menu so i'm going to show you in car how the menus look like so give me a second
All right, and I'm back. So I hope you like these video samples. Now, what I'm going to do is instead of going into the car, I'm going to basically emulate um, myself sitting in the car. So I have an Android phone here, which I'm going to use to show you Wi-Fi functionality in terms of the battery. I have Anchor um, portable battery that's going to provide me five volts and one amp. As you see, when I move this battery, it's going to start providing the um, basically the power to the device. And the moment device senses power, it's as if you would start your car, it starts recording straight away. So that's neat. Now you can switch the device off by holding this button basically and it switches off. And you can do the same thing to switch it on. Now, once you're recording, um, you can always hit this red button and what that would do is it would switch on emergency recording and that simply just protects the file from being erased. So just in case, you know, you, you, you've seen something or you want it to be recorded for whatever reason, you want to keep that recording, make sure it's not overwritten, hit that button and you have, if I'm not mistaken, 30 seconds or, or whatever it is uh, of protected footage. Now, um, in terms of the footage size, one minute would be equal to around 112 megabytes, at least at nighttime. Um, could be slightly different during the daytime, but that seems to be the case. So you can plan accordingly. Obviously, there's plenty of storage space, so you're not going to really run out of it. Um, with included the SD card, you have um, here, uh, when you select the second option, we have video files and protected files. Um, as I said, you know, video files would be standard files, protected files would be the same video file, except it would be actually protected. So the device cannot overwrite it, but it can still format it along with everything else if you wish to do so. Now here we have settings button and in settings we have resolution 1080p, 720p at 30 FPS, both cases. We have exposure minus two plus two um, in case you want to use it. Video length one, three, five minutes. I would recommend three minutes really because one minute is too short, five minutes might be too long for your liking. So three minutes or five minutes probably is ideal. Timestamp, enable, disable. I would recommend it to be enabled, especially if it's uh, properly set up because you know, in case of an accident or something like that, you would like to, to have a timestamp. Voice recording, uh, once again, up to yourself, um, however you want to treat this feature. Um, loop recording, basically what that does is, you know, if you disable it, once the card is full, it's going to tell you card is full and, you know, get me a new card or something like that. Or if it's enabled, it's going to keep overwriting the files once the card is um, full. And that's a normal feature on pretty much all the recorders and I would recommend it to keep it on. Volume, self-explanatory, G sensor, basically works exactly as this uh, button. It senses, you know, the movement of the camera. So, you know, if you have an accent and the camera moves or falls off the dashboard or so, uh, sorry, off the windscreen on the dashboard or something like that, it would protect the file. So I would set it on low and leave it on that. Uh, that way, you know, if you have an accident and you can't really press the button or something like that, at least you have a recording from impact. Now we have also automatic turn off display. I wouldn't normally use this turn off feature because it's, you know, it's not battery operated. It's, uh, it's fed from the car battery. So why turn it off? But at the same time, if you're driving at night, you probably would want this uh, feature as in turn off after a minute or something like that. Daytime settings. Now this is very neat. It actually automatically set this date and time last time when I connected to the phone. So if you look at it, I have 2236, nearly the same as on, on the phone. Um, I'm not sure what happens when the device is powered off, whether it loses the time or not. Um, don't think it does. There's some sort of storage, but I don't know for how long that internal battery thingy works. But anyway, it's there. And if you use your phone to connect to it, it synchronizes the time. Pretty neat. Um, daytime format, pretty usual. Language, you have 13 languages, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 13 languages. Then you have video outputs, NTSC or PAL. If I would select one of these, the screen goes black and basically it outputs through video out here and the adapter is included for S video type connector. Information, firmware 117, capacity and things like that. Not much there. Um, format car, uh, card, as I mentioned before, you know, you can simply format the card and that's erased. Now card contains three folders 
NVIDIA, PVIDIA and the firmware. NVIDIA is your normal video files, PVIDIA is protected video files, so the folder that the device wouldn't touch during normal recording. And then firmware is for this specific function, when you click the upgrade firmware, confirm if there would be file, it would take it off, it, it's downloadable, it's free and you know, I recommend to use it. And obviously nice little button here as always, restore defaults, or you can use reset button. Uh, not a button, sorry, a reset kind of uh, thingy here, which you'll need a pin for. So, you probably already noticed that obviously there is a Wi-Fi, but I didn't have any Wi-Fi settings, and that would be done through the phone. So, I'm going to switch on the Wi-Fi, and you connect basically just like to any Wi-Fi network. So, here's the list, and here I have Drive Pro. I click OK. I put in the password, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's how it came with the device. And I'll show you how you can change that as well. Because you can't actually change on the device itself. So let it connect. There we go. We have it connected. I go to Drive Pro application, connect to the device, synchronizing. And that's, I think, when it actually passes on the time to the device. As you see, I can see the, the live view. Now the view is not quite live. As you see, for instance, see there is a little bit of delay. The video is quite fluid and, oh, and never mind. Um, the video is quite fluid and it does work, um, you know, good few meters away. I went basically two rooms away and it was still working fine. So that's pretty neat. Um, now, what we have here, we have browse button, so basically we have um, the video files, whether they are protected video files or normal video files, so basically two different folders, and we have settings, and in the settings is actually same as on the device, which is pretty neat, you don't actually need to play with the buttons there when it's on the windscreen. Um, you have download path, so obviously the files are downloadable via Wi-Fi, um, but you also have, when you go to Wi-Fi, your configuration so now you can change your you know network name basically how this device was would be seen on your phone and also the key so that's it as far as it goes for the wi-fi functionality and the device menus and things like that next we're gonna go with conclusion i'm gonna talk a little bit about what i liked what i disliked about the device and um, yeah just give you my thoughts about it so stay tuned so i'm back time for conclusion um as you see, by the way, I brought up my mount, which I used to mount this camera on the windscreen, hence the shaky footage. So after all, the shaky footage is not a problem if you're using proper uh, mount, which is much uh, shorter, so it produces less shake, where this is all wibbly wobbly that I got from eBay just for a couple of dollars, but does a perfect job to mount a smartphone. So did a quite okay job to mount this. However, I couldn't actually point the camera to the sky and that's one of the things that I'm going to talk about. Now, what happens is if you show too much of dashboard, so let's simulate that. See how everything just blows out in the background. So what happened there is the camera automatically adjusts and it says, okay, we have lots of black image and we have lots of bright image. And now what we need to do, we need to somehow balance. We need to show the details in the black and we need to maybe discard details in the white. Same happens with the white, you know, if the image is too white, the dark areas are sometimes neglected, such as shadows. Now, while this is not a big issue, you simply can point the camera slightly higher, which is what you can see in the product's advertisement. Hint, hint. Um, I should have known it all along. However, I do want to see a little bit on my dashboard and I actually do want to see my hands on the steering wheel, showing that I'm holding it properly, you know, that I'm doing everything that needs to be done in, in terms of insurance claim. And I also want to see outside. So for that reason, this camera kind of not a great performer. At nighttime, it's a different story. It's a different story in weathertop area, like uh, underground car park or something like that, where the light is simply everywhere. Um, and as you see in the footage as well of that, you know, it's not that bad inside and outside. It's actually quite good. So it's actually quite good at nighttime because your dashboard is, is dark and the area outside is dark. But during the day is just not great. And I think that should be improved. Now, another thing that I didn't like, but it's not a big deal, is the Wi-Fi connectivity. 
First things first is the smartphone application can actually go to sleep, which means you're losing your connection. Um, so that should be some sort of a solution to keep the smartphone awake, that'd be nice. But also, even more importantly, is the Wi-Fi connection is actually not great and it's dropping frames and the video is a little bit choppy. Obviously, all on top of that, to make things worse, you have a little bit of delay. So, you know, as I said, it's not a groundbreaking feature that everybody needs. It's, it's, you know, it's good to have for framing maybe your camera, but it would be nice if it was a bit more fluid. So that's that. Now, another thing, in my opinion, which completely destroys this product in my book is what it's meant for and how it's made. Now, the way they're advertising themselves is obviously, you know, to use in the car for the car video recorder for your security and enhanced night view and G-Sense and everything. It's meant to be used in your vehicle at all times. So what that means is you mount it on your windscreen, you leave it there, you forget about it and it has to be there. So there's a flaw. It's huge, shiny bezel around and it's noticeable. So somebody comes to your car, sees this, this thing left in your vehicle, sees your car parked with nobody attending it, obviously, because that's what happens with your vehicle when you park it somewhere, breaks your side window, takes the device and off they go because they noticed it, it looks flashy, it says 1080p, must be expensive, why not? So it just encourages car theft and means your device, your car and other property which you might leave in the car, maybe not in the view, now is at risk. So that's not great. In my opinion, anything that goes in the car and is this size is ridiculous. It should be about a third of the size, no flashy rounded thingies like that, small little logo, no 1080p or anything like that written on it, very discreet, so you could put it, you know, wherever you want to put it, but very discreet, not reflective, and that wouldn't scream, I'm an expensive camera, take me and, you know, sell me for whatever money you want and make some money for whatever you need. Um, that's the last thing you want um, for your vehicle and for your property. So that's, that's that. Another thing is, if somebody manages to take it out, even if it's a small product, there's no lock features. So you cannot simply, you know, put a pin and say, put a hardware pin or some, something like that, where if somebody takes it, they don't know the pin without transcend support, they can't do anything at all with the device. There's nothing like that. And that also defeats the purpose because as I said, you know, the device is left in your car. So not enough that it's flashy, that it's big, that it's highly visible and noticeable. Now it has no features at all to protect after the theft because obviously, you know, if somebody takes a device, last thing you want is for them to be able to use it because that just encourages them to take more devices like that because now they know they're accessible, they're nice and flashy, they can sell them and now they can also use them. So what's the point? So for that, I would give actually thumbs down. I'm not keeping this product, I'm returning this product and I'm waiting until a product with a similar or much better functionality comes in, preferably in 4K, but not required, completely not required. 1080p is fine as long as it's a nice and crisp image, 60 frames per second, small, discreet, and with a lock feature of some sort, so somebody who takes it wouldn't be able to use it easily anyway. So that's my take and overview of the product. Um, if you think differently or if you have something to add, feel free to add in the comment section down below. Click the like button if you like the video. Don't forget to visit my channel, which is Ed's Drafts, um, for more videos to come or simply just review my history if you are interested in something else. If you dislike the video, click that dislike button and do let me know if you did that what um, are you missing in the video or what you didn't like. Um, I always welcome negative as well as positive comments. So yeah guys, thanks for watching and uh, thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative and as always, have a nice day.